Hey everybody, today I'm going to be doing an unboxing video of my latest Amazon purchase. Today we're going to be taking a look at the EcoWit Heavy Duty Rain Gauge. Uh, the model number on this is WH5360B. I'll put all that information in my video as I do with all my other videos. Hopefully you're going to be able to see this. Um, as I do with all my purchases, I bought this myself with my own money. I don't get anything for doing these videos, but I do like doing the videos just to remember the things I've bought in the past. And in case there's somebody else out there who might be thinking about buying the same item and they wouldn't get an idea of what does it look like when you get it in? How does it work? Uh, it might help you as far as making your, your decision on whether you should purchase it or not. So let me give you a... So I have a rain gauge but mine's a old school rain gauge where you basically have to go out there and just check uh, it's basically a cylinder that hangs on the fence and you just check the uh, water and you dump it whenever you've got uh, your rain gauge total. This one's digital and uh, it's my first attempt at using any kind of digital rain gauge. So I basically went with this one because for me the price was in my budget. There's some that are really fancy and do all kinds of stuff. All I'm really interested in is getting rain readings. So I didn't go with anything too advanced. Um, hopefully this model will do just fine for my needs. So, And all I'm doing right now is just taking the stuff out of the box just so you can see uh, what it looks like as far as an unboxing. And then once I get it set up and get it out there, uh, we'll go through some of the setup. So three AA batteries for your screen. Now some of this stuff I might have to read to figure out exactly how it works, how to set it up, but I'm just giving you a view of Single AA battery required for this. I'll say this, everything's packaged nicely. Again, this is the WH5360B model. This is the hardware package. Thank you for your purchase card. And then here's going to be the funnel. Everything feels to be good quality, whether it's the plastic, whether it's the uh, metal or aluminum. Uh, nothing feels cheap. Everything feels nice and sturdy, so that's good. But anyway, those are all the items that come in the box. I'm gonna go ahead and take some time to, uh, actually, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and take some time, read through the instruction manual, put it together, and then we'll get set up and we'll take a look at how it works. Hey there, so I've had a few minutes to go through the instruction manual, look at how you set this thing up. And uh, as I did that, there were some items when I was unboxing the uh, rain gauge that I didn't really know what they were. I thought I'd maybe go through and just kind of walk you through those now that I've read the instruction manual. So here's your rain gauge itself. Uh, this is going to be what's reading the um, amount of rain that you're getting. This part here, I kind of knew what that was. It's your funnel. The only thing I was going to mention with it is it's got some lips. Hopefully you're going to be able to see that. There's three little lips around the side of it. Those match up with these holes on the inside of your rain gauge. So as far as assembling it, all you're going to do is line up the 
the lips to the inside of the hole and then you just turn it and that's kind of what locks it on place. So that's easy if you ever need to take it out, clean it, do anything like that. It's very easy. It's just basically uh, there's just a locking mechanism to hold it on top. The thing that I really didn't know when I opened it was what this is. What this is, is this is a steel filter that they give you that basically sits on the inside of your funnel and then there's a little hook that comes through the bottom here that you hook on there and all it does is it kind of keeps debris from getting into your rain gauge so if you've got you know pine needles or leaves or uh, birds or anything like that if anything gets dropped in here that uh, this little metal filter keeps your rain gauge clean to where you're only recording uh, raindrops that are going in there that's really about it the rest of it is just the pole and then the mounting hardware that's going to attach the pole to the back of the rain gauge so we can put it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I just wanted to walk you through those pieces. Let's get it set up and uh, see what, what kind of rain readings we can get. Okay, everybody, it took about five minutes at the most to get the uh, rain gauge mounted. The directions were actually very easy to follow. I honestly, uh, as far as the mounting hardware, I just used the picture that they have in the instruction manual. followed the picture and it was uh, simple. So I've got it mounted on my pole. All we're doing right now is waiting for some rain to see how it records the, the rainfall. But setup was a breeze and um, I'll keep you posted. We'll see how it works. Hey everybody. So uh, as luck would have it, we actually received rain for the last two days. So I've been using this EcoWit rain gauge for the last three days. Uh, it has been working great. Before this rain gauge, I was using the Strauss Precision rain gauge. So I used to do some weather uh, reporting for the local news station here. And when I got into that, they told me that the Strauss Precision rain gauge was the most accurate one. That's the one that they recommended. And uh, that's what I've been using for the last three days. I've been comparing the rainfall totals I'm getting with this EcoWit to the Strauss, and they are coming out exactly the same. Uh, so the accuracy of this has been great. But the other, you know, the, the benefit of it is I've been able to check my rain fall totals from the comfort of the inside of my house versus the Strauss where you have to go out when it's raining or go out where it's wet and uh, check the rain gauge manually. One thing I'll mention is I am using Energizer lithium batteries uh, in both the module and the rain gauge itself. The rain gauge I have about 25 yards from where I have the module at. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see, but my signal strength is very good. So again, I'm using lithium batteries. That's what's recommended in the manual. That's what I'm uh, going with. I'm not going to go through all of the settings on this. Uh, there's some things in here where you can, you can set the date format that you want. You can set an alarm clock. You can set whether or not the buttons make noises when you push them, that kind of stuff. But I am going to walk you just through some of the basics um, that are displayed on this module. So you do have a high-low. It basically keeps track of the high temperature and the low temperature that you're getting per day. Now that reading is going to be based on indoor temperature because the uh, the only thing that's outside is basically your rain collector. So you can see 81 degrees is the high for in here. Um, the low was 72 degrees and that was a couple of days ago. Same thing with the humidity, the max humidity, and the minimum humidity. So that's just kind of what your high-low does. Uh, you can reset your high-low as well as your history at any time that you want to. You've also got a history, which is kind of cool. Um, you can go back per day. So for today, July 27th, I've received no rainfall totals. But I could go back to yesterday, the 26th, and we had 0.59 inches of rain. You can go back the day before, we had 0.61 inches of rain. So uh, if you had previous year's data, you could go back and look as far back as you want per day and per year which is pretty cool. Um, so I'll get out of that. Oh, you can also track it by month. You can do it by day or you can do it by month or you can do it by year. On the main display here, you've got this rain one and rain two button. So the rain one button is basically gonna display the rate, the event, the app per hour <coughs> for the last hour and then for the 24 hour uh, time period. So I can go here and I can see for the last hour, I've received no rain. For the last 24 hours, I've received four hundredths of an inch and then the rate that I'm getting per hour the event so the event would be uh, let's say you're wanting to track it for maybe a hurricane maybe you've got a hurricane blowing through or something like that you can set an event to where you can track it for a given uh, event versus hours or something like that 
So that's basically all that top display is going to do. This rain two button is going to be for your bottom display. And that's where you can choose whether you want it to show per day, per week, per month, per year, or the total that you've received since you've had the unit. So right now I've got it on total, but I can adjust it to for today, which I've received no rain for the week, 0.59 inches for the month, for the year, so on and so forth through the total. So, so it's pretty cool. So the other day when it was raining, I had it set today. And as it was raining outside, I could sit there and watch this number just accumulate. And then depending on what I had uh, number one on, you could either see for the whole hour or for the past 24 hours, what did you receive? Um, so anyway, I've been really happy with it. Uh, there's not a whole lot of things I buy that just kind of blow me away. This thing is really cool and it's really convenient if you're into tracking your rainfall totals. I enjoy it so much, I'm actually getting my father one for his birthday coming up. So uh, granted, I've only been using it for four days, but in the four days I've used it, I've been really impressed with it. I'll do an update if uh, anything changes with that, but so far I'm happy with it. If you've got any questions uh, that you'd like to ask me, post them on the video or leave a comment. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps.